everybody deserves to go after what they want and nobody is not capable of that. And it really comes down to putting in the work. Like it's not about who's the smartest or has this weird innate skill set. It's what are you willing to do to make it happen? And I'm willing to do anything and everything because I care about this and I know that it needs to exist. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Tune in for a new episode every Tuesday to hear our honest conversations about topics like wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and self-development with guests who are really smart, really inspirational, and really fucking funny. (laughs) It's real, it's raw, and it's unfiltered. Inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, we realized it's so much more than that. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to help you navigate any transitions in your life and propel your personal growth. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. All right, guys. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Almost 30 Podcast. So glad you're here. What's up, fam? We're smarter than you think. Yeah, let her. (laughs) Set those expectations low. <laughs> Prepare to have your mind blown. We had someone in our group say that they really love when guests realize that we're not as dumb as we look. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, dude. Actually, it is enjoying to like surprise people. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes I'm tired of it and it's tiring, but you know. Most but I'm sure time. everyone feels that they have some sort of thing that they're working against or that they have to like totally. prove, I guess. Totally. And I you think know. as you get older, you kind of get a little bit more... Um, Decaf. Like you degaff about it, like very calm, just like, all right, well, if they get it, they get it. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. And it's more of like their problem, mm-hmm. pretty much. So happy you're here. Have you joined the secret Facebook group? Yeah. It is a treasure trove of amazing women from all around the world that are connecting every minute. And connecting in real life. Real we life. We had two beautiful girls find each other and go on like this camping excursion adventure. Because they just related on so many levels and they're like, you want to like hike? Oh. I forget where it was. I feel bad. I should look yeah, it up. No. I think it was in Canada. It looked beautiful. They like love posted that. a picture and they're like, it's real, like almost 30 nation. Like, love connecting. So it's really cool. We're excited. We have, um, we're working on a secret little project for y'all. So it'll get you guys more involved in what we are. <laughs> you know, what's so funny too is in the secret Facebook group, we have a master directory of people. Oh yeah. And before it said, what's your favorite episode as one of the tabs? <laughs> and someone said, fuck that. And they removed that tab and they put like, what are you interested in? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? They can edit it? Yeah, they edit it. Because we want them to put all their information so they can connect with other people. Okay. So they have their name, you know, email address, Instagram handle, what they do. Mm-hmm. And they, they removed favorite episode. That's, hilarious. That's hilarious. Why? That's, I don't know. <laughs> I love it though. We would they replace it with? What are you interested in? Oh, cool. Like favorite hobbies. You know what? That's a better tab. I completely agree. <laughs> it was a way better tab. So thanks for, you know, <laughs> taking the bull by the horns and really just doing the damn thing there. <laughs> Outsourcing. Outsourcing. You guys do it better. I know, honestly. That's true. You guys all do it better. So um, if you're not in the secret Facebook group, just search Secret Almost 30 Podcast Facebook group and join with women all over the world. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate, and review. Um, Share it with your friends. It's always great. Um, I think it's a little gift. I actually had someone share a podcast with me the other day. It wasn't our own, but it was... um, What? What was it? It was... Oh, fuck me. I, honestly, I think it was... An, okay, I was talking about how I really... Um, I don't know why this is true, but I used to watch the news every morning growing up, like middle school, high school. I was very good about current events and now I don't. And I What kind of current events were you, <laughs> were you on top of in it middle school? It was just school? like every morning I would watch the Today Show. So I kind of uh, knew what was going Today on. Show. Yeah. So if there was like breaking news, if uh-huh. there was like whatever going You'd on, go to school, I knew about like, it. Let's talk <laughs> politics. I was just in the know. Yeah. And, uh, I'm 0% now, I'm, in the and now I'm not because I don't really watch TV. I just watch like some stuff on Netflix. And so um, someone sent me like an episode of The Daily because we were talking about current events. And they're like, this really breaks it down. Mm. Because I wanted to know more. And it's more. quick and easy. Yeah, it's quick and easy. It's so good. Only listen to that, guys, if you have time. You know, just stay true. Stay, stay, stay where you are. 
We want to keep your ears right here. <laughs> Can you imagine almost thirties version of like oh, daily God. news? Yeah, it's embarrassing. <laughs> um, we had. Do we have? A, are you looking for a? Yep. Great yeah. review. So um, I did want to say though about current events, it was crazy. So Justin and I are moving. So we mm-hmm. moved and we were doing like a round of um, stuff in the car. So it was Friday night. We had a round of stuff in the car. Car was packed and we took a right off of where we live right by the beach. And there happened to be this person that we were turning right in front of in a van. It was like a gray van. And he literally had leopard tattoos all mm-hmm. over his face. And he was like tweaking, like tweaking. His eyes were all crazy. And me and Justin were like, whoa, that dude is fucking on on something. Like it was crazy. And then we're moving at the place. And a few hours later, my friend Adam texted me and said there was a shooting. And and that was the person that did the shooting. (gasps) Isn't that fucking insane? Oh, my God. And it just so happened. And this is crazy, too, is he was you guys. This was a a block away from my at my house. And in, in Venice, so Venice is very cool, but it's also very dangerous. We have shooting, there's shootings all, all the time. time. Yeah. So stabbings. just right when we turned to leave my apartment area, he's coming in and we were at our new apartment unloading stuff. And I remember seeing him and was like, yo, that dude's on something. It was just like a weird, I remember his face, like even right now. And then he was the shooter. How the fuck did he get a gun? Isn't that, exactly. Isn't that crazy? I just was, wow. I, I couldn't believe it. There was, someone was telling me about a story. Um, I think the guy was homeless, you know, mentally unstable, possibly on drugs. And he uh, randomly stabbed these two women. Just that like, ra- oh yeah, it was random. It was like actually on the street in public and one of them died, but it was just out of the blue. So I kind of take, you know, we walk around Venice for a little bit, like that's kind of normal. That was in Venice? No, 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 no. But I'm okay. saying we walk around Venice yeah. and we kind of see some crazies yeah. and we're like, okay, cool. Keep yeah. distance. But you don't know. I like know. someone could just come at you with a fucking machete. I don't want to be scared all the time. But I know. It's I kind completely of, agree. Because usually but. we take walks on the beach at night. So that very well could have been us taking a walk, you know, on the beach down there. It, wow. Yeah. It's, I mean, the, the shooting stuff is like happening all the time and it's a huge problem. But that was kind of, that was kind of um, interesting on Friday. But move is good. My new neighbor. um, It's so, I love your apartment. It's so nice. My apartment's so nice. So when you move into a new apartment or if you want to just clean your energy in your apartment, highly suggest saging it. Mm -hmm. So right when I moved in, there's no furniture or anything. I took the time myself for like a half an hour to sage it, um, going in counterclockwise circles to erase any energy in the building and then setting the intention. So my intention was... Um, for the space to be filled with love, creativity, peace, joy, and abundance. And really just took a moment to like thank the space for being a great space for Justin and I, and really just like kind of fill it to the brim with positive energy mm-hmm. as much as I could. I continually do it. Yeah, I need to do it because we had, we talked to Tim Braun, who mm-hmm. will be on the podcast and um, he said to do it monthly. Yeah, because I think especially um, your place, my place, just a lot of places actually on the West side, People have been in them for a long time. So it's good to just do like a a maintenance, you know, if there's spirit. Completely. (laughs) I have a little friendly ghost. Yeah. Um, But it's always just good just to, you know, set that intention. I know. I wonder if there's anything in my apartment. I don't think there is. It didn't feel like anything. Yeah. And if there is anything, it's probably a joyful I was like up in the middle of the night wondering if there was something. But there is a neighbor who keeps... (laughs) What's his name? Eric. So Eric's been there since well, 1984. The His rent's probably four fifty a month in a two bedroom in Santa Monica. No fucking joke. And so I threw away a sweatshirt of someone that was from four years ago. Doesn't matter. Eric found it. Eric, Eric asked me why I threw the sweatshirt away. I move it. It was a dirty sweatshirt. I was have it in five the bags. Yet? Yes, mm-hmm. I have five bags of stuff for to donate, but this was not making the cut. Ask me why. And then what was the second thing? Oh, my grill. So I got my car fixed because my car got <laughs> hit and the grill was in my trunk for some reason. It's a fucked up grill. So I threw my grill out and he's like, approach me. Eric approached me. He's like, hey, I just want to ask you a quick question about your grill. I'm like, well, what about my grill? He's like, you know, that's worth a lot of money on Craigslist. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Eric, I don't have time, but if you really want to put it on Craigslist, I would love for you to make money. Here's your it. permission to go Here's your the permission. Trash. He's like, my grill, see my car over there? It's worth $400. I'm like, okay. And then I threw away an old, this is the third. I threw in an old diffuser because it was just nasty in the inside. It was on top of the trash. 
this morning. <laughs> Eric's going through all my trash and he's, he's like, like I wonder what this is for. Honestly, I'm like, are you watching me walk down the stairs and then going to check in the trash? To be honest. Yo. This, uh, that's not going to fly. Is his vibe good or not? It's just, just like, like real, whatever. real, real, like real, oh. real interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was like, he showed us around the apartment for probably four hours. Poor Justin. I was out. I mean, honestly, I was, I was moving stuff. I was no longer in the conversation. Justin had to like entertain him. And he has a wife. He has, or he has a girlfriend, girlfriend or whatever he lives with. Who's also, they're hoarders. <sighs> straight up. I mean, if you've been in that place for so long, you're definitely a hoarder. But yo, don't ask me what I'm throwing away, dude. Mm-mm. Anyways. So at the new place, that's how you clean a place. But that's going out. That's what's going on with me. I'm so happy to be in a new spot. I mean, it's the best. It's the best. Feels so great. great. Trees, Feels so more right like outside. us, you know. It is. Well, th- there's something to having more, and you were talking about like kind of growing out of your space, and your energy is too big for the space that you were in. So, if you guys are feeling, you know, I think there are ways. If you can't move, there are ways to do that. And um, I've been doing like a lot of purging, just getting rid of stuff, like simplifying. Yeah. Oh, I need to take your clothes. I've been. Oh yeah, I've been listening to the minimalist podcast a little bit more, and Lindsay's um, just promoting sorry. podcasts left and right. Real sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And yeah, I just noticed that I'm happier when I have less things around. But I also have habits where I'm like, I need more clothes, and then I'll go and get fucking fast fashion and be an asshole. I know. You know, so I just, I, I really have to remind myself what's important in my space, you know, and we get a lot of stuff sent to us too. And I really, I've been, we've been trying to donate more and, um, yeah, we have tons of know, stuff we're donating do give, to women's give, shelter. Yeah. So it's just interesting to know how my energy changes when I have like a lot of shit. My clothes are all whack too. I don't even know. I don't have any cute clothes. I'm not even kidding. Either. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I looked at, I was like, oh, I hope sequins come back in. <laughs> like I have well, you also have dress. like some like um. I remember when we used to record in the closet floor, and you're like, "Look at all those BCBG dresses." I have so many <laughs> cocktail dresses. <laughs> I probably have sixty cocktail dresses. The girl who doesn't drink cocktails, and they're anymore. all like ver- variety of sizes. <laughs> like there is a wide range of sizes, ranging in those cocktail dresses too, which is also <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and I was like pulling out some clothes. I'm like, mm, never gonna wear that again. Yeah. Never going to wear it again. I always make an excuse. I'm like, well, maybe if yeah. I have a, uh, go a theme party yeah. down at the beach. If I'm in France and I'm on a picnic, <laughs> I might need these overalls. You know? Yeah, I feel that. But it feels good to get rid of stuff and kind mm-hmm. of like pare down. Yeah. I'm like it's elated. Does it feel like new? I mean, you and Justin are always good, but just it does, does it feel, feel new together? It feels like a it's new like, step. It's like nice. Our old place was the pea pod. This is the pea house. Oh, what? <laughs> the pea pod for the pennies. Oh, the pennies. And this one's the pea house, I think. I don't know if pea house makes sense. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Pea house, I guess. Tea house, pea house. I don't know what the joke was with that one. Okay. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> we thought it was funny. And it does feel good. It feels more like adult. You know, it yeah. feels more like we have space now mm-hmm. to bring in new things. And just invest in this space a yeah. little bit. In, Apartments are hard, but if you know you're going to be there for a few years, you know, yeah, invest I mean, in Justin's going to die. He's like, oh. he's like, oh, I'm going to buy a standing desk tomorrow from uh, Amazon. Okay. I'm like, no, you're not. We're going to buy a cute one. Yeah. I literally, I'm like, no, you're not. We're buying a cute one. He's like, okay, you have 48 hours. I'm like, no, <laughs> we're not. We're buying a cute one. You <laughs> <He> turd. <laughs> Please. He'll me. like it once he sees exactly, everything come yeah. together. Exactly. Because we're not teenagers. Mm-mm. Dudes still buy it. Like dudes are still buying the the plastic um, like sock drawers. Do you know what I'm talking about? Honey, we have we we have two of them. <laughs> we we have those plastic sock drawers. It's like so embarrassing. That's not I have embarrassing, one. But I have one too. Yeah. But, I know. I was like, but I want like, to organize better. I know why. <laughs> I'm organize better. He like is like, I don't know. But we gave out. Give some. There was someone going through our trash in Venice because, of course, so we're moving. So there's so much stuff in our trash. I mean, it was like shopping spree. It was like supermarket sweep. Honestly, there was a person, new person there, getting our stuff every hour. Just really sweet sometimes, but sometimes it's really hard because they really make messes. So we have to clean up the mess. And there was a guy there out at the end of the day, and he was like getting a fresh batch of stuff. There was a suitcase that he got, which was a pretty good one. 
It was, wow. a, it was an old suitcase. We gave him, Justin gave him one of his shirts that was like probably a $200 shirt he got in Soho in New York, but it was too small for him. Yeah. And the guy put it on. He's like, this smells so good. Oh, it was so sweet. And Justin's like, do you think I want my skateboard? I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> literally, it's going to be like a grungy du- uh, Justin <laughs> rolling down the yeah, street. Literally, I was like, honestly, and we've given out, like we've had before where we've had bags of clothes where yeah. we walked outside and there was homeless people out there and we gave them to them and it Justin. made their life. We were like, here's our stuff. And so I'm surprised there's not homeless people walking around with Supreme shit on. I would love Venice. to see some women wearing your BCBG sequin dresses. Me too. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else they could wear. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? My BCBG gear. Performing like on a, the boardwalk. Yeah. And there was just a lot of like, like a lot of, I was excited to get rid of professional stuff. What do you mean? Like corporate wear. Oh, yeah. Like honey, like getting rid of like Pleated blazers. Pleat. I have so many pairs of like black dress pants, black or blouses from like Ann Taylor Loft. No hate, but I'm just like not wearing that stuff ever mm-hmm. again. So I'm like, fuck yeah, bye. Yeah. Oh, that bye. feels good. Feels so good. Never want to see it again. Anyways. Okay. Anyways. All right, guys. Let's get into this episode. So excited. So excited. I met Carly uh, Stein through one of Justin's guy friends, Justin and I's guy friends. We got introduced and actually I'd been hearing and seeing beekeepers naturals everywhere at Here One, Mm -hmm. at Paws Float Studio, just all the places that I'd been going. So I had them on my radar. Um, But when I met her, I was just blown away at how smart she was and how I really loved her story. Like I loved loved her story. I felt like she lives and breathes her brand. Mm -hmm. She lives and breathes this whole movement. And she's just like a really good person. She was super helpful for us when we were going to Toronto, willing to like extend um, a connection with someone that we were looking to connect with. And she walks the walk and talk the talk. So I'm really excited for you guys to hear this interview. It's amazing to hear her story and also to hear about bees. Yeah, queen of the freaking bees she is. Beekeepers Naturals is a brand that um, we've been really incorporating into our daily. And, um, you know, it's it's, it's a, a brand or a type of product that you have to be super thorough in how you create it, how you educate people on it. So Carly is a beekeeper among many Truly. other things. Truly, you have things. to be a beekeeper to work at Beekeepers Naturals. Mm-hmm. They don't it fuck around. makes me want to kind of... Be a beekeeper. Kind of. Yeah. Well, you can be a backyard beekeeper. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And I have, I've had some on my little balcony. Are you scared little, of them? Um, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I'm a little... I'm a little scared. But I want to get over it. I know, you can get over it. <laughs> Justin's terrified. Really? Yeah, so he's like, scared. He is. <laughs> That's exactly what he's like. <laughs> I was like, when Jim and, Swatting. Jim and Zach were putting together our like bedroom <laughs> furniture and Zach was like holding the bed for maybe five minutes. He was sweating his ass off. <laughs> Justin was in the corner. I'm like, what's Justin doing? He's like trying to put a, a spider on a napkin for at least four minutes while Zach was like holding half of the bed. He's like, I got to get rid of the spider. I'm like, dude. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, but Carly is so intelligent. So intelligent. Grounded. She left her corporate job Boss. in finance, living in New York. It wasn't a fit and she knew that she wanted to make a change. Uh, she got pretty sick and she was she found something that really worked for her that was all natural that she believed she could really help others. So Beekeepers Naturals is basically effective natural alternatives to typical chemical-based over-the-counter medicine. So it really helps you to feel your best by leveraging the magic of bees. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, share this episode with any one that you feel it would resonate with. Uh, tag us on Instagram. We love to hear from you there as well. And subscribe, rate, and review if you love it. And we will see you guys on tour. We are on tour Whoa. right now. I feel like we're on tour till the end of time. Mm-hmm. Tour Which life. Which is great. Mm-hmm. Which is great. Um, all right, guys. We love you. Enjoy this episode. Enjoy. This episode is brought to you by Chosen Foods. Thanks so much to Chosen Foods for supporting the Almost 30 podcast and our obsession with avocados. Um, you probably know Chosen Foods because they started the avocado oil craze. Uh, this is a San Diego-based food company, and they offer a variety of healthy fats and clean label products like avocado oil mayo and avocado oil-based salad dressings. They're so delicious. I'm currently obsessed with their wasabi avocado oil mayo. It is delicious and finding its way onto everything that I've been eating. Uh, But what I didn't know is that 
So when I normally like shop for oils, I'm in the grocery store, down the oil section, there's so many options. I'm sure all of you are just as confused as I am. Which one do you choose? Coconut oil, olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, extra virgin this, something, something that. And what I didn't know is that uh, most oils have a lower smoke point of about 350 degrees like coconut oil and olive oil. But avocado oil has a 500 degree smoke point. So you can use it for baking, sauteing, roasting, you name it. Um, And you don't have to worry about it giving off toxins past a certain smoke point because you're most likely not cooking past 500 degrees. I love this brand. I trust them. These are natural, whole foods, real ingredients, sustainable. I just am obsessed with them. You can go to chosenfoods.com slash almost 30 and use our promo code almost 30 at checkout to get 50% off your entire order of $10 or more. So that's chosenfoods.com slash almost 30. Use our code almost 30 to get 50% off your entire order at checkout. This episode is also brought to you by Moellens. This is a health and wellness brand that is committed to bringing you CBD products that are clean and free of any artificial ingredients. I love and trust this brand and it is so effective. Amy Duncan started this brand after her husband's malignant brain tumor returned and he started to use and incorporate the CBD products into his wellness routine as he was being treated. Uh, Amy has a background in running a genetics laboratory and just being in the medical space for quite some time. And the lab that she was working in uh, started to talk about testing cannabis. So she did a deep dive and knows this plant like no one else. And these products just show it. And I am so proud to have Moellens as a sponsor on the podcast. Right now, I am loving the one for all topical CBD wellness oil. It is so good. Um, So this is like a delicious blend of CBD, gardenia, moringa, tonka bean, and sea buckthorn buckthorn. Whoa, I cannot pronounce a damn thing. Uh, You can put this all over your entire face, body. It brings you energy and brings the skin to this like glow. If you're experiencing kind of dull, lifeless skin, just watch what this all over CBD body oil can do. Um, It is free of parabens, silicone, sulfates, phthalates, artificial colors, fragrances, and formaldehyde releasing preservatives because... You know, you don't want to be covered in synthetic chemicals, do ya? Um, so for our listeners, you can go to moellens.com, peruse this website. Okay, it is gorgeous. The products are unbelievable. Give it a try. Let us know what you think. Please message us if you want our suggestions. We have them all. Moellens.com. You can use our code almost30 for 10% off your first purchase. So Moellens, M-O-W-E-L-L-E-N-S dot com. Use our code almost30 for 10% off. How'd your sister? She's 24. Oh, so you're older. Do you feel like you act like older? No, she's way better than me in every way. She's the best really? person in the world. Yeah, there you go. That's You'll so probably sweet. hear it in the thing. That's so nice. What's what's she better at? How? She's just like she's just a she just wins at being a human, you know? Mm. She's and just the best example. She's really smart. Like mm. too smart. Really? Yeah. Yeah. She's in med school right now. Um, and she's just the best. We're Aww. like, we're both, obs- it's a mutual obsession. Oh, yeah, oh. you're like, I'm not the only one <laughs> who's obsessed. <laughs> yeah. And I have actually, my dad and stepmom are adopting a baby right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I have like a little brother to be, wow. and he's really cute. From like where? a new baby? New baby. Well, they've had him, they're adopting him out of the foster system. So he's seven mm. months old. He's from Dominican. He's really cute. I'll show you guys a picture. It's really oh, cute. So happy. Gosh, wow. It's really cute. What inspired them to do that? They've been trying to have kids for five years oh, wow. and didn't work. And then her brother was in the foster care system and had a really, really rough childhood oh, and ended up in prison and passed away last year. And when that happened, they're like, you know, we're not the typical demographic of like foster parents and that's a problem. So why don't we start taking foster kids in and give them like a really stable chance? And so that's oh, what happened. That's beautiful. Yeah. The foster care system's fucked. It's oh, really fucked up. It's, 
Yeah. It really scares oh, me. Hurts my heart. We need to have someone that, mm. like a story from Completely. foster care. Completely agree. It's really hard. And it's crazy because the adoption lists are insane. Like they were on every adoption list and it's, it shouldn't be this hard to adopt a kid. And then like there's so many kids in your own backyard that need a good home and mm-hmm. nobody, you know, know, like it's not, yeah. That's mm. another topic, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that's really freaking hard. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm feeling chill. I just had my yeah. hand honey. I know. I'm like, Ooh. I know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like doing like CBD a good amount now. Yeah, same. Or doing taking. And then we were in Denver. We had some edibles. Mm-hmm. We, um, I've been doing doses every day. You have? I thought, yeah, I love it. I do it before bed. It's fun. Um, we had edibles and someone gave us extra. And I was like, should I bring these on the plane? I'm like, is that fine? <laughs> and Justin's like, no, you can't bring them on the plane. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I put them out and I just like left them on a corner. I'm like, here are the edibles. And before the flight, <laughs> Justin's like, we're like in the uh, security <laughs> line. He's like, you didn't put any in my bag, did you? <laughs> and I'm like, what a freak. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, no, I didn't. And our friend Rob was like, what do you mean? He's like, she would put it in my bag and go, ha ha. <laughs> I was being arrested. And I was just dying laughing. I'm like, I didn't put any in your bag. I was like, he's like, do you have them? I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> and then I look in my purse, had them, <laughs> had them, forgot to throw them out. Had them. Did they take them? No. Nothing happened. They're like so well packed yeah. that you could, there's, we actually walked by dogs. There was a dog. Mm. And, but you couldn't smell them. Yeah. But I was like, oh. I've traveled with them before. Yeah. Like once before without knowing. I think I've traveled with Coke before on accident oh, cool. in my wallet. <laughs> I took <laughs> I took our CBD honey to Mexico and the guy was asking me questions and I was like, eh, really? off refined sugar. What are you going to do? Yeah, honey. Really? Yeah, yeah, he was fine. I know. I don't know what the regulations are because if it's like legal, CBD is legal. CBD is legal. But not THC, I guess. So well, not, you're not really supposed, I don't know. It's it's all over the yeah, place. You're, you're not really you, supposed to bring it across border. It's particularly stupid for me because like we ship internationally. So if I, uh, you could just ship it. <laughs> well, no, like I could just like get us flagged and put us on like a watch thing. Um, so my co-founder was like, how fucking bad do you need CBD? Like relax. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Yeah, your co-founder was so sweet when we met him at Year One. He's the best person. How did you meet him? He went to law school with one of my best friends. Okay. Mm-hmm. And was like, I'm into this. Mm, not at first. At first it was like, please, please, please help me. Um, and he thought it was, he is a guy, so I've always been into natural health. He mm-hmm. was like the type of person who thought that I was just a stupid millennial spending money I didn't have at Whole Foods and like all this natural health stuff is snake oil. And he was always sick because he was articling at the time I met him in like all nighters and he would go to CVS mm-hmm. and just buy every single cold and flu product. So he started doing what happened when we when I started the company, I really wanted to get NPN certifications for all the products. What's that? So in the US, it's like FDA and then Wild West. There's no regulatory structure for natural, but in other parts of the world, like in Europe and Canada, they do have a regulatory framework, but it's optional. And for me, like I'm just a hardo about products. So I wanted everything to be like certified medical, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I wanted to get an MPN, but I couldn't afford a lawyer, didn't know how to do it myself. And I met him and my friend was like, that's the dude. He's like the smartest person I know. Mm. Like just get him to help you out. He's really nice. So he started helping me out and we created this whole structure where like I'd pay him once I had revenue and he's doing all this research. And as he's doing the research, he's like, oh, this is real. And so he starts using the products and he started using the propolis specifically and that took away his sore throat. And he came back to me a few days later and he was like, hey, I, I want to be involved in this in a big way. Like this stuff works. And I was like, well, you're great, but sorry, no, because you're not a beekeeper and everyone in senior management at this stage has to have beekeeping experience because we're a sustainability driven company. So I was like, I know you've got the JD MBA, but like, sorry. <laughs> You're a boss bitch. Oh my God. <laughs> but no, but then he goes out and like, again, this is You're while he's articling. <laughs> sorry, sir. Yeah. You're not a beekeeper. <laughs> Pretty much. But then he goes out while he's articling and he does a master's apprenticeship course in beekeeping, comes back to no. me two months later and is Stop like, it. I'm a beekeeper now. And I was like, okay. Wait, that would turn me on so hard. It's yeah. the, <laughs> the best decision I ever made Wait, was what? having him join me. He is Amazing. Oh. Yeah. And my best friend. Wow. I mean, honey, he's a master beekeeper. What? How can you get an apprenticeship <laughs> in beekeeping? It's easier than you think. He just went to a union and like was an apprentice for Damn. some people. <laughs> so talk to us about how you got into this. Yeah. And can you introduce yourself? Sorry, mm-hmm. we just roll right in. But introduce yourself. <laughs> Tell us how you got into all of this. I'm Carly Stein. I'm the founder of Beekeepers Naturals, which is a wellness company. And we 
take different superfoods from the hive and we make products to help your health. And how I got into this. So I have an autoimmune condition where I can't take antibiotics. Doesn't affect my life that much except for growing up getting sick was a death sentence. Like something like a cold would develop into a viral infection. Like my family calls me, or they don't anymore, but they used to call me bubble boy because I was like, we'd go on family vacations and I'd be like stuck in a room Mm. for the whole time. But yeah, so I couldn't take antibiotics. So something like strep was actually really serious for me. Um, So I didn't really fit into the traditional medical model. And then that pushed me to like hardcore explore natural. And I would do tons of research and end up finding things that made a lot of claims, but they just weren't effective or I'd have an adverse reaction. So I was just like always kind of frustrated with the wellness world, but searching. And then when I was in college, I did a semester abroad and I got really sick. I got really bad tonsillitis and I was going to have to come home. I was like, fuck that. Like I busted my ass waitressing to go out here. I'm not going home early. So Mm -hmm. I was looking for anything. And I went into a pharmacy in Italy and was given this weird stuff called propolis. Like the pharmacist took one look at me. My cheeks were so swollen. Like I I looked insane. That's living abroad too. Oh my God. Literally my face in (laughs) the pulse. So mine was like 10 times the normal. Um, So she looked at me and she's like propolis. And I was like, Mm, I don't know what that is, but okay. So I started using it and for the first time, it wor- something worked for me. It functioned in my body the way antibiotics do for regular people and I made a full recovery and that Get was just out. like a huge game changer. What yeah. is propolis? So also comes from the bees, but totally different than honey. So propolis is made from plant and tree resins and they collect these plant and tree resins, put it through their enzymatic process and then they use it to line the hive and keep it germ-free. So they literally line the entire hive with it for the newborn baby bees. They line the inside of the cell walls to create a sterile oh, environment for newborns. My God. And it's basically like the immune system and the protector of the hive. And then for humans, it's antifungal, antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial. So it's a really great all around immune booster. Wow. So did like a light bulb go off when you were given this and it worked or was it just something you mm-hmm. kind of kept in the back of your mind? Like was just, that- I, I mean, I was really, I was not thinking about starting a company at all at that time, but I was really stoked about these, this product. And then it was really interesting because I was doing a ton of traveling all around Europe and everywhere I went, things like propolis, pollen, royal jelly, like they were just common. People wow. knew. So I was, I was digging deep into all the benefits and just using it as a consumer. And then I came home to finish up college and I got sick, of course, and I just could not find propolis anywhere. And I would go into health food stores and people didn't really know what I was talking about. I'm from Canada. So I went to school in Vancouver. um, So it also wasn't like LA Mm. wellness scene. Mm. But yes, I was looking for propolis, couldn't find it anywhere. So I just got online and looked up a local beekeeping association. And I sent an email to like their info account asking to buy this directly from someone. And one guy got back to me, this guy named John, who's actually a third generation beekeeper from Romania and a retired biochemist who like moved to Canada to keep bees. And I, yeah. A romantic relationship with bees. I know. (laughs) It really is. Love of my life. Um, So I met John and I started buying product directly from him. And the second I saw the bees, like I saw an apiary in hives, I was obsessed. Like I've always- And it's an apiary. It's a bee farm. Cool. So, apiary. Yeah, I learned so, that earlier. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> it's apiary. really cool being around bees. So the first time I was around them, when I just went to buy product from him, I fell in love and I was like, how can I learn about this? What can I do? So I became his apprentice and I basically worked for free for him. Mm. And also now beekeeping is kind of like cool and hipster. But in 2012, when I was doing this, my friends were like, sorry, what are you doing with a six-year-old yeah. dude on a Saturday? And, and the all love, the what did you love about that? Like, what, what did you feel? I've always been obsessed with nature mm-hmm. um, and animals. And the second, and I already, I was like primed to love everything because I had this um, incredible experience with the yeah. products. Like I was honestly You're feeling grateful. better than mm-hmm. ever. And mm-hmm. I have like, I have really bad, infl- like I used to dance and I have inflammatory stuff and just everything was kind of clearing up. But more than anything, it was the immune system thing. Like just having something that could actually work was crazy. And when I saw the bees, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And I just wanted to be around them more. And that was really it. And the more that I learned about them, the more obsessed I became. And that has continued. Wow. Mm -hmm. So a stupid question, but like, were you afraid? Like, did you, Mm -hmm. were you very calm? Like when you first like put on the suit and went out there or like, yeah. So most people would freak out. Mm-hmm. So the first time 
I actually didn't even put on a suit. I don't okay. know why. I was like weirdly chill around the V's. It's like, like level 10 beekeeper, yeah. no suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Damn. Yeah. I, I beekeep with no suit all the time, actually. Because they sense- Have you ever beekeeped in a bikini? I haven't done that, but I have worn that short shorts. hot for that a branded would... photo show. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> but we get a lot of guy customers. <laughs> you, you, don't you like um, give off like a fear? Pheromones? Pheromones, Pheromones right? Yes. You actually know a lot about bees. Um, I, this, so That was a guess, but I think- I know you give off a fe- like a pheromone when you're fearful and like totally. some animals can pick up on that. And they, they definitely do. So when you, if you're a person who freaks out around bees- definitely wear a suit because they will pick up on that because one of the ways they communicate is through pheromones. Damn. Um, but for some reason, I was really calm around. I think mm-hmm. like I'm such a nature person and such a like camping girl that yeah. I was just kind of fine with it. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't scared of them at all. So in a apiary, <laughs> do they have a bunch of different hives and then there's a queen in each hive? Yep. Bunch of different hives. Every is hive there like needs a queen, a queen of the queens or no? No, no queen of queens. Okay. Just a queen per hive. And there can only ever be one queen. Like if there's another queen, either one, the, one will die or mm. what will happen. This actually happens in a healthy hive. Typically, if they're reproducing at a really good rate and it's getting crowded in there, they'll swarm. So they'll start producing a new queen. And then half of the hive with the old queen will pick up and go find a new spot. Oh. So the newer queen stays in the, the mm-hmm. spot. Yeah. How smart are bees? really smart okay yeah i mean, <laughs> I mean they're um, really smart in ter- I, in terms of like how they structure things they have a really interesting organized environment that they create like every single bee has a job and your your job within the hive changes based on your age which is really cool tell me more yeah and then the other thing that is really interesting about bees is it's a female driven society so the queen rules Um, All of the worker bees are female. So basically everyone doing something is female and the males are called drones and the drones literally do nothing. Like they're there for the purpose (laughs) of mating and they mate with the queen. She goes on her mating flight and mates with these drones. And after they have sex with her, she like rips their dick off and they die. Shut up. You're lying. This is real. This is real. And they all die. And that, yeah. And then like drones... They're, they're a drain on resources. So after the mating flights occurred, the worker bees will sometimes kick the drones out. Like maybe going into winter, the drones will get kicked out and they'll just be like, okay, get out now. And it's they'll all awesome. leave and die. They have little bee dicks. Mm-hmm. Wow. Pixar's coming out with a new one. <laughs> it's called <laughs> Little Bee Dicks. The Queen's Flight. <laughs> yeah, the Queen's Flight. And they just bee all, dicks flying yeah, everywhere. Just fuck all Jesus the bees. Christ. Wait, that is for the ages. So what are the jobs that they have per, for ages? So... I think the first job, it's like um, you're, you're a nurse bee. So you're kind of tending to the newborn baby bees that are hatching. And then Cute. there's other things. So like a worker bee that will be like a forager. Um, and that's the ones who are going out for food and collecting nectar and tree resins and pollen and bringing it back to the hive for everyone. There's bouncer bees, which hang out at the front. Because there's other, because there's other hives, what can sometimes happen is your neighbor bees will try and steal your honey. So the bouncer bees at the front will you know, protect the hive and be like, no, no, not in here. And they can smell the different ones, the ones that aren't from their mm. same hive. Whoa. Mm-hmm. How do you, so I know what you do is sustainable and we'll get into that, but how do you make sure that the hives are not getting contaminated in any way? Like, why is it so pure? So there's a lot of things that we do. The biggest one that really gives us a picture of purity is the third-party pesticide testing. So for every single product of ours, all of the raw product before it hits the bottle or jar, we send it to our lab and we test for every pesticide, toxin, and pollutant in accordance with Health Canada, which is more rigorous. And one, that gives us like a really amazing pure product. But two, we can actually ensure that our bees aren't being exposed to these pesticides, which is the hard thing because this is the problem. So let's say I see like organic honey all the time. And as a beekeeper, I'm like, okay, enough with Mm -hmm. that. Because you can have an apiary on certified organic land and it can be beautiful and amazing. But the problem is the bees fly. If the next door neighbors are doing some dirty stuff, they're going to fly over and get exposure to that. And the bees can forage for a five mile radius. And it's really hard to find fully clean ground with a five mile surrounding radius. Like just thinking about like, you know, the government will sometimes spray the sides of ditches and, Mm. and just kind of what we're seeing with farming today. It's really challenging to find that. So the pesticide testing is like kind of a good Mm. benchmark. And then beyond that, we work with small scale beekeepers. We have really 
amazing dialogue with all of our beekeepers and we do a lot of audits leading up and little things like we never over harvest. You'll see sometimes with commercial beekeeping, what they'll do is they'll over harvest the honey because the honey is still the bee's food. They need to have some and they produce a lot. So it's typically okay as long as you're just being conscious of everything. But Mm. um, sometimes you'll see people over harvest the honey and replace it with sugar water. And that's not great. I mean, they can survive, but you know, that's not, it's not what they're meant to be eating. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, it's not what they're meant to be eating. I think it throws off the pH balance in the hive. And also, and also it's just like the end, the quality of the product you're getting from that isn't great. I have, so if you can imagine like beekeepers associations, it's, it's like older dudes. And I'm this like young hippie chick who comes in and has ideas about like pH. And so people find me really, really annoying. And I'm nervous when I say things like throws off the pH balance because people fight me on that because people don't want to change the way they've been doing things. So they think mm. it's normal? They think it's fine. And they've been- Well, I think that's when they think that, you know, bees are dumb. We're the leaders. We're yeah. the boss. We're smarter than them. We'll do sugar water. That's what it is essentially. Yeah. But they know, you know. Aren't honeybees, weren't we worried about honeybees for a second? Is that We still are, yeah. Thing? It's a big thing. So first of all, honeybees are the world's most important pollinators. So literally mm. one third of our food supply- is reliant on honeybee pollination. Things like almonds, avocados, even coffee is partially bee pollinated. Wow. If we lose the bees, we are literally screwed. Like we will have an epic food supply issue, Mm. um, not to mention our entire ecosystem will be completely disrupted because the bees also pollinate flowers that other creatures feed on and, you know, they play an integral role there. So it's a big deal. And what's happening is bees have been in decline So typical overwinter hive loss is 10 to 15%. That's like standard bees that die in the winter. In recent years, we've lost 30 to 40%, which is pretty serious. And I mean, there's a lot of factors at play that are contributing to that. A big one is pesticides. I'm all about stopping the pesticides. So what happened was in 2000, remember like when DDT was taken out of the game in 2006? Because of eagles, bald eagles. Yeah, doing a lot of bad stuff. So when DDT was taken out, they replaced it with a class of pesticides called neonicotinoids. And neonics, it's a neuroactive substance. It distorts the bee's spatial reasoning Mm. and it's really harming the bees and it's the most commonly used pesticide. And then beyond that, we're talking about like soil before, um, it's water soluble. So it's getting into our soil, it's degrading our water. And this is the grossest part. So pesticides, they can be sprayed on the plant. Neonics can be sprayed, but sometimes what will happen is they'll dip the seeds in the neonicotinoid substance and it will grow up through the vascular system of the plant. What? So it's like in the plant. Why would they do that? They're more sturdy and durable, right? They last through the season. That mm-hmm. they don't, yeah. I mean, it's less, they don't have to spray. It's it's less yeah. time consuming. And then also they think that it's, Originally, I think the thought was that it's more environmentally friendly because they're not spraying. It's like on the actual plant, but not so much. We were just discussing wow. before how I have high arsenic and cadmium content in my body. Can you believe that? What's cadmium? Well, we'll look it up. I don't, I don't really know. We'll I think it's, it a, we, we, it's in soil in your Cad- water supply. LA is supposed to be the worst. Cadmium. Brita yellow. apparently does not work. Um, I'm wondering even like with showering too. Oh, I have like a shower filter thing. Do you have a filter? Yeah, yeah. a lot of people have... Sh- I, yeah, I should get a filter. Yeah, I got mine on Amazon. I don't okay. think I'm... I probably have it if you have it. What does cadmium do? Effects of cadmium exposure. Cadmium is of no use to the human body. <laughs> it's even toxic at low levels. The negative effects of cadmium on the body are numerous and can impact nearly all systems, including cardiovascular, reproductive, eyes, and brain. Okay, but it doesn't say what. Does it make you skinny? <laughs> so Lindsay did the um, Everly Well testing. Yeah. And um, she did it for heavy metals. So that's how she knows about her heavy metal. Yeah. Anyway, so that's like something that we can really be conscious of. Like, too, I mean, we're always thinking, like, oh, we should wash off our vegetables, but like, where do they come from and mm-hmm. what are they growing mm-hmm. in and what were they s- apparently soaked in? In Canada, they probably don't do that. What's it called? Neuro? Neonics. So Neonics. not as much. It, I mean, it's, it's used pretty globally right now, but Ontario, which is where I'm from, Mm -hmm. um, they instituted a partial ban on neonics and some places in Europe have started to ban it and other parts of the world, there's more positive momentum. So that's good. So DDT was, and so now they use neonics and that's like Monsanto, like what kind of, okay. Yeah. The big pesticide people. So yeah, so that's, that's pretty terrible. And that's why I always tell people to make a difference, like start with your lawn, Mm -hmm. plant some, first of all, stop using pesticides on your lawn. Like 
that's just gross and bad. And it's bad for your kids. It's bad for your dogs. It's bad for you. Don't do that. But also just planting flowers because the bees don't have access to clean food, planting some flowers with heirloom, untreated organic seeds. It's a really great way to support Mm. them. Even if you have a small space, like do a balcony garden. Yeah, it's a good thing to do. We interrupt this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor, Dirty Lemon. Krista and I are in love with this brand. Uh, We're so over the cleanses and thinking that we have to cut out and just drink juices. Truly Dirty Lemon is the anti-cleanse. This is a functional beverage that you add into your routine to, for example, increase your energy. The CBD, which is actually my new favorite, it's the cannabis blend. So the girls on tour recently in Seattle tried the CBD blend. So CBD, this blend is a calming non-psychoactive formula uh, with the highest quality CBD from the cannabis plant. You won't get high drinking it. but you should expect a mild euphoria, full body relaxation, and a clear head. And that's just what we needed at the end of the day after the tour. We're so high on energy and seeing all of you. It was really nice to just kind of relax, have our CBD blend. Um, It really helps with my inflammation, uh, especially in my joints. Um, But they have a bunch of other blends. I'm loving their collagen blend. Uh, It's like a beauty elixir. My skin looks insane. If I'm drinking this, like throughout the week by Friday. Uh, okay. Glowing. Uh, this helps to reduce wrinkles and it also triggers new collagen production. Uh, yes, please. So we love Dirty Lemon. They're delicious functional beverages that you can incorporate into your normal routine. Grab them on the go, put them in your purse, bring them to work. We love them so much. So go to dirtylemon.com and get this. Use our code almost30 for a free case with purchase. So dirtylemon.com and you get a free case with purchase when you use the code almost30. This episode is also brought to you by Four Sigmatic. Okay, stop what you're doing. Please go to the Four Sigmatic Instagram and you can meet Maury. Maury is the mushroom mobile. Okay, they created a mushroom mobile because they're the coolest brand ever. And he's traveling up and down the West Coast with free shroom drinks and adventures for all you fun guys and gals. Anyway, I just love it so much. Uh, We love Four Sigmatic. As you know, we've been bringing them on tour. Everyone's been freaking out. Four Sigmatic makes drinking mushrooms, mm -hmm, drinking them delicious and easy to do with their wide variety of superfood and super good for you beverage. Um, so there's mushroom coffees, matchas, hot cacao, multi mushroom, multi mushroom blends. They're all so delicious. I am loving the golden latte right now. So it has uh, coconut milk powder. So it's really, really creamy and delicious. And I have been using the mushroom coffees. I've been blending it with hot water, a little bit of MCT oil, cinnamon, and what else? Oh, and um, I have a little uh, coconut milk powder as well that I'm putting in there just to make it creamy. But I just, I have so much fun being like a little mushroom chemist. (laughs) So try out a bunch, see what works for you. This has helped me to just kind of create routine, I guess, in my everyday, whether it's a beverage for my mornings when I am, you know, pulling a tarot card and meditating and doing all my woo-woo stuff or right before bed when I'm like reading and I have my hot cacao with reishi. I know it sounds a little kooky, but for some reason the routine just brings me like peace and groundedness. So anyway, don't knock a troll, you try it. So forsigmatic.com slash almost 30 and you can use our code almost 30 for 15% off of your first order. So that's forsigmatic.com slash almost 30. It'll actually bring you to a landing page where it has some of our favorites and you can use our code almost 30 for 15% off. The amount of bees is reducing. Do you think that's like deforestation and then pesticides? So it, it's a lot of things. And then this is the other thing that makes it really hard to track is that more beekeepers have entered the market. Like there's more backyard beekeepers Ugh. in Brooklyn. So the numbers kind of get skewed. Mm-hmm. So when pesticide companies are fighting back, it becomes really challenging. Ugh. Yeah. So that's rough. But 
But yeah, I mean, I still am a big advocate for like backyard beekeeping. Anyone who wants to get into it, we need more people taking care of the bees. And then some other factors in bee decline right now, it's climate change. We have aggressive weather. And sometimes what will happen is bees in cold areas, when they hibernate, they'll come out, they think it's, you know, it gets warm and they'll come out, take their cleansing flight and they think it's all good. Mm. And then they'll freeze because it will get cold again the next day. So weather patterns are screwing with the bees. Uh, Agricultural practices have totally changed. Like we're all about monocropping now, which makes it really hard. By the way, monocropping has completely changed everything. I sometimes hear people talking about needing bee products from a 10 mile radius, like local bee products. In the olden days when farms and apiaries were like all kinds of flowers and fruit and vegetables, then yeah, 10 mile radius makes sense because you're exposing yourself to what's local. But current practices, a 10 mile radius is probably like some gross agro monocrop farm. So mm. not such a good thing. You're act- It's the opposite of getting the variants that you want. So something to consider. What's monocropping? So monocropping, it's literally just planting all of one type of crop. So uh, dedicated blueberry corn, farms. Tons of soybean. Exactly. And then that's bad because they're more susceptible to pests. So they need more pesticides. Uh, and the bees don't have a very diet, which is not great. Because like even if all we were eating was kale, if that's all we're eating, not so good. And they have a bloom period. And then after the bloom period, it's like a food desert for the bees. So there's a time of year where they have tons of food. And then they're just kind of like, starving. How long do they live? So the queen bee can live three to five years. Wow. Yeah. Worker bees will live. I know. Royal jelly. Um, Worker bees will live like six to eight weeks during foraging season. And then how long do the drones live? Like not that long. So they (laughs) fuck and they die. Yeah. Yeah. Worker bees, drones, bouncers. So worker, like bouncer bees would be a job um, within worker. So it's really just workers, drones, and the queen. And nurse is... Within the workers. Within the workers. What's, mm-hmm. So you mentioned royal jelly. Yeah. I, I've heard that. I don't think I've used it or eaten it or what do you do with it? So royal jelly, it's the food of the queen. Mm-hmm. So this is how I like to break down bee products. Propolis is the medicine of the hive. It's the immune booster. Pollen is the bee's protein source. It's vitamins, protein, all that good stuff. Honey is their daily carbs and energy. And then royal jelly is their superfood. Oh. So royal jelly, it's it's like literally all the queen eats and all baby bees are fed royal jelly for the first three days of development. And then after that, they're transitioned off onto pollen and honey. And only the one who's going to be queen keeps eating the royal jelly. And biologically, the queen looks very different. So one, she's living three to five years, which is like a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, She can lay up to 1500 babies a day, which is a lot. And then worker bees don't reproduce at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then she's just larger. Like she looks different. Like she's, she's much larger, more robust. So that's the royal jelly. And then for humans, we've been using it across cultures for a very long time. Like in traditional Chinese medicine, royal jelly has been used for hormonal balance. It's been used as an anti-aging tonic. And then with Western medicine, recently there's been a lot of studies looking at royal jelly's effects on the brain. And that's what we look at. Mm. So like our Belixir, we have royal jelly in there. And royal jelly is actually really exciting because it's really high in acetylcholine, which is the neurotransmitter responsible for brain body communication. So it helps Mm. to basically speed up your transmission system. And then the other thing about royal jelly that's really cool, it contains a fatty acid called 10-HDA. And 10-HDA basically promotes brain-derived nootropic factor and it acts as a catalyst for neurogenesis. So it helps your brain to like create new cells. Um, So really good for memory, Mm. for just memory, focus, concentration, and overall brain health and preventing neurodegenerative conditions. Wow. The the connection between your mind body, what's that one called? So um, acetylcholine, that just helps with neurotransmitters who are basically responsible for like messaging. Wow. Huh. That's incredible. Yeah. It's also really amazing for like anti-aging and fighting inflammation. Like I put it on my face all the time. You do? Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't clog your pores? It's the best. Wow. I do. I like, I wash my face with honey. No way. Mm-hmm. What about your hair? Not my hair. Yeah, Does it, hair get, it gets amazing. in your hair though. Honey? Or you just, you just keep your, out of your hair. Does everyone <laughs> else get I just, careful? I just Literally. put my hair up. <laughs> Are you just careful? I like sometimes just tuck it in my shirt back there. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. my gosh. Wow. That's incredible. So have you, so since being mm-hmm. in Italy and trying, mm-hmm. what is it called? Propolis. 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 Propolis for the first time. So have you been pretty much like managing your 
like anything that comes up, you just take it right away. Like for others that might have the same autoimmune condition. So I have like radically changed my immune system. Okay. Um, I rarely get sick. I use a shitload of feet products. I also uh-huh. like eat clean and, you know, I yeah. a lot of stuff like that. But Propolis has just really helped to change change the way my immune system functions. It's really interesting. I was at my, mine and my co-founder, our good friends got married in Mexico and literally everyone got food poisoning, but us. Hmm. And so he's like, it's propolis. It's, and it might be because propolis is antibacterial. So it's possible that we were like eating all the same food and we just combated the bacteria. Whoa. Yeah. So the bees go out and then they pollinate and they eat stuff from the flowers and then what they digest they add an enzyme and then propolis is created in the hive? Pretty much. So when the bees collect stuff, they have two stomachs. They have like their honey stomach, which is basically a nectar backpack and then like their stomach stomach for them to eat. And so they'll store stuff in their honey stomach and then kind of regurgitate it. And then in the hive, it will ferment. So that's where you get like a lot of the benefits as well. Wow. How the hell does their do their little bodies know to put it in one stomach and not the I other? I know, it's crazy. Do you want to hear my favorite bee fact? Yes. Yeah. I want I want them all. I want more bee facts. So one of the ways the bees communicate beyond scent is dance. And they'll do something called the waggle dance to like let their sisters know where the good food is. So like a group of bees goes out one way and they see a really good source of flowers, a really dope restaurant, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And then the other group finds one another way and they'll come back and they're both doing the waggle. And then everyone's going to be like, okay, wait, which, where do I go for the food? And they'll have a dance off. And the winner of the dance off, that's where they'll go to oh my. pollinate. And like, I just think that's how we should can live you, our lives. Can <laughs> you create what will be a viral video mm-hmm. for your brand? <gasps> Putting like dope ratchet music to and like get, get like planet earth style, whatever of bees doing this dance. <laughs> I mean, just the facts alone. I'm like down getting that. I you know, know what I mean? Okay. I love that. Do that. You were a dancer. Yeah. Oh my God. This is yeah. your time. <laughs> Honestly, do you think you were a bee in a past life? It's possible. Wow. Oh yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Little dancer. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you at the beginning when you're talking about um, when you figured out your autoimmune condition, mm-hmm. what what happened that like helped you figure it out? Or is it over time? It was over time. Mm. It was over. I basically, I would just get, my joints would swell up. Mm. Um, and then I was very reactive to antibiotics, like breakout in hives all over. Like I looked like mystique and like not in a hot way. Mm-hmm. It was not good. Um, and like the hives wouldn't go away for months. And so, and I was reactive to all kinds of medicines. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my immune system was just really, really weak. Like I was just always, always sick. I had chronic tonsillitis, mm-hmm. chronic strep throat. And then it was like, I couldn't really get my tonsils taken out because everyone was nervous about putting me on antibiotics after. Oh. So it was just difficult. Wow. That's really challenging. Thinking about all the things that we might need antibiotics for throughout our life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's also, it's kind of a blessing though, because now, well, first of all, we built this company really servicing the autoimmune protocol community because that's a group of people who have all kinds of things where they just randomly react and they don't have a lot of information around it. Um, And we gave them something that they don't react to and that works for them. So that was kind of, they kind of championed us. But now there's a huge issue with overprescription and there's a lot of people that just don't want to turn to antibiotics. But unfortunately, a lot of stuff in the natural world, it won't deliver the way they need it to. And so now that demographic has kind of become very interested in the world of hive superfoods and how they can heal different things in a more natural way without the side effects. Wow. Can you, you're such a, like a, I mean, I feel like you, you came, use big you, woods. You came out of the womb. You use big woods. <laughs> you came Maybe out of the think. womb and we're like, like, I'm going to start a business. Like that feels like your energy. Like what? No, no, no. Where I did, did you not. learn this? Like what? Yeah, when were you like, I want to start a biz? Yeah. How did you grow so, up? Like you said you were like hippie, but yeah. I feel so that. So I had a weird, first of all, like I had a really weird path into starting this company. So when I was in, so I, I started like doing this in college and I was a TA for my chem class and I was like beekeeping and then pretending to be a scientist and like making stuff. Mm-hmm. And I ended up like selling, I would sell stuff to people. Like this is when I thought, it could be a viable business. People would Facebook message me to buy these like weird products from some chick's dorm room at a premium and they were working for people beyond me. So 
I mean, they were working as an immune booster. It was just propolis at that time. Um, and at that time I was like, okay, I could do this maybe, but who starts a B product company? Like that's insane. And I didn't know how to start a company. Um, and I got a job offer out of school in finance. So I went to work at a hedge fund because that makes more sense to people than a B product company and also like needed money, honey. Mm -hmm. um, so I was at this hedge fund for like 10 months and then I was recruited by Goldman, which is how I, we have a mutual mm -hmm. friend. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I joined Goldman as a trader and I was there for two years. And in it was- New York? Uh, I was back and forth between New York and Toronto. Okay. Um, I was at like a startup desk in Toronto. So they were structuring it. Lots What's of fun. Trader? Trading stocks. Do you know Sean Legister? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of people I like there. I love the name game every once in a while. You know, beep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but yeah, so I was doing that and I just kind of fell into that. And it was never what I wanted to do. Like I never was interested mm. in finance at all. Um, and I was doing this thing and it was this, it was really hard. It was this really weird thing because I was doing this thing and I was getting a lot of positive reinforcements. People thought I was smart and I had a good job and I was quote unquote successful, but I was doing something that was so out of line with my values. I was around people who I did not connect with in any way. I was working long hours at something where like I didn't understand my go forward because I'm not motivated by the things that people around me are motivated by. And I just kind of hated my life. And then I also had zero social life because I was working analyst hours. And because I was on a startup desk, I was the only analyst. So I didn't even have like people to hang out with and eat pizza when we're there late night. It was like mm. alone, really wow. shitty. So it was during that, that I was like, I, I was really, really depressed. And I was, I, I sat down and I was like, okay, like what the fuck do I like? Because this is not sustainable. So I just have to like find something good to do in my spare time. And when I thought about what makes me happy, I was like, well, I was really happy beekeeping and like mm. making products and making stuff. So I started doing that again. And in Toronto? Yeah, in Toronto. So that's I was like, where's the New York Beekeeping Association? <laughs> New York would fucking have that though. Well, I it's actually, like best yeah. they actually do. And I actually started, I like reached out to my beekeeping contacts in Vancouver because that's where I went to school. So we were kind of doing it from there. And I was like slowly just setting things up. And then the company started growing and we launched the company in Canada. And it got to a point where we were in 600 stores across Canada. And I was like secretly running this company on the side while working analyst hours at Goldman. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So did you get the product yourself at the hives? And then you were like, I'm going to package it. And then who sent I it? I set up with a co-packer, okay. literally Googled everything, had no idea what I was doing. I found a co-packer. Um, What's a co-packer? It's just somebody who you package give all the it. ingredients, you tell them exactly how to put it together and they'll put it together at scale um, versus me like making a single propolis bottle in my cut. apartment. Yeah, exactly. Well, you pay, yeah, you pay them. Pay them. Um, so yeah, so I set up with a co-packer. My college professor, my college chem professor sent me up with a dude he did his PhD with who has a contract chem facility. So that's where we started doing all of our testing. Um, and I had a lot of like things aligned like that. And then I was funding the company out of my salary. So <laughs> yeah. Oh. And it was really like, it was very, very secret um, because Goldman, like people yeah. are not the biggest fan of having like a full side hustle like that. And then also, like, oh, you need to work more. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, you have a life outside? Mm, probably give you more hours. <laughs> yeah. And then also it was like crazy. Like my friends thought, at first my friends were like, okay, it's like a cute quirky thing. You're like making bee products, very hipster and fun. But then it became really real. And it got to a point where I was like, I hate what I'm doing day to day. And I love when I'm working on beekeepers and I need to be doing that full time. So um, I was really kind of like checked out and ready to leave and everyone who I really looked up to and respected thought that I was blowing my life up and having a mental breakdown because mm. again, like who leaves Goldman Sachs to have a bee product company? And it's not like I was starting an app or it was like beauty or raw chocolate or something that people had heard of. Like even now when I tell people I'm a beekeeper or say I make bee products, they're like, mm, do you have a job? Um, oh. But yeah, mm -hmm. people were very confused Welcome by it. World. <laughs> mm -hmm. Literally. <laughs> You can do that. Yeah. So money. wait, how do you make money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So left Goldman, booked a flight to Indonesia the next day, like blew up my life. That's a little midlife crisis. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no, no. That's, you have to give them that. Very, That's very, very pray love. Yes, totally agree. Um, <laughs> well, I had a lot of big moves. I was like leaving my good job, broke up with my boyfriend. Literally everyone thought I was batshit crazy. Um, so I, I felt, and I mean, it wasn't as crazy as it sounds like I set up with a co-work space. I had like very specific benchmarks, 
with what I wanted to do with the company over a three month period. And I constructed this life where I could spend like X amount of time meditating in the morning and then be by myself and really focus on this company and what I want and what I need to build it in a real way without all of the noise and all of the expectations and pressure and, you know, that sort of thing. Whoa. And I did that. And then, and I put together a very intense plan and brought three new SKUs to market during that time. And then products. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then came back and I'm still doing it. (laughs) So the breakup, were you just like, he wasn't aligned with your life? Yeah. He's listening, so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) ex-boyfriends. I think, I think what it was, so this was really hard for me because he's amazing. Um, it was just, I think I was in a state where I was so work focused and there was something that I really had to do and I just couldn't prioritize the relationship in that way. And it beca- it, it just transitioned from romantic to like homies. And mm. I couldn't get that part back. And then I was like, I'm too young to like just be bros with the guy I'm with. Like mm-hmm. it shouldn't be like that at this stage. Mm-hmm. And I just also really needed to focus. I was like, I'm doing something really different. I've thrown all of my savings and everything into this. And it's got to be all about that right now. We interrupt this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor, Kopari Beauty. Kopari has been a lifesaver on tour. Okay, so the tour has been a dream. Just a dream. I think the worst part is putting on makeup. Okay, I know we don't have to put on makeup for you guys, but we want to look nice in pictures sometimes. And uh, taking off the makeup is the worst part of our day, to be honest with you. But with the coconut cleansing oil from Kopari, I literally have nothing to fear. It is off in 60 seconds. It's a beautiful, soft, gentle wash. And I didn't know this, but oil pulls oil. Okay, so I thought, oh, oil clogs clogs my pores. I shouldn't use it. No, no, no. It pulls the oil out of your pores, cleans your skin, leaving it fresh and glowing. I love it so much. Um, This brand is the real deal. They are using 100% pure organic coconut oil sourced from the Philippines. All their products are made as natural as possible with the safest ingredients. Promise. No sulfates, no silicones, no parabens, no GMOs, no toxins, nothing. They don't compromise at all. Their products are effective. They are honestly spa worthy. I have a spa in my shower every night. Um, I also love, as you know, the Kapara deodorant. It's my number one. It's my number one. Goes on smooth, clear, smells delicious. I love it. I just stick it in my purse. I I can't say enough about it. I actually don't want to talk too much about it because y'all are going to go and buy it and then I'm not going to have any. Um, Kaparibeauty.com. You can use our code almost 30 for 15% off. So K-O-P-A-R-I beauty.com. Use our code almost 30 for 15% off. I honestly think like when you have a pull to something like you have a pull to beekeepers, like I don't think you're supposed to have room for that other stuff. Like I don't, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, if you're dating that, like that is your relationship. Yeah. I completely We talk agree. about balance. Do you have balance now? Do you feel like, or are you still mm. kind of in the... I struggle with balance. I'm yeah. trying. I mean, we don't either. So it feels <laughs> like you guys probably can relate to this. Doesn't it feel like you're, I have no idea what, what being a mom feels like, but it kind of feels like this is your baby. And as we add team members, like there's these people who work for the company who one, they're like asking me things all the time. So I feel like a mom, but also I like, I love them and I'm like protective of them. Sure. Mm -hmm. I know I was thinking Mm -hmm. about that too. Like when we hire people, more people, like if they leave on like, I just was thinking about like, I was, so I worked, when I worked in New York, my boss, I was very close with her. We were in between New York and London and we'd go to New York and London all the time. I'd stay with her. I was with her 24 seven. And then I left when I moved here and I was like, how gut wrenching Mm. when you get very close and you invest in an employee and then they leave you. It's terrifying, you know? Yeah. But like, really it's like, everyone's just living their own lives. Yeah. And it's not like for them, but I mean, that's so hard. How many people are working for you now? There is eight of us now, including my co-founder and I. What do they do? Uh, We have some people in in social media and marketing, Mm. creative directors, managing our e-commerce, and then a few in operations Mm. and sales. And how many... So are you in stores in the US and Canada? So not so much in the US. We're more direct to consumer in the US. So we sell from our website, we're on Amazon, Thrive Market, that sort of thing. Great. Mm -hmm. Thrive Market, plug. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> plug, 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 plug. So why do you add CBD in there? Like what is the benefits of CBD? So many benefits. So the whole thing. So our tagline at the company is naturally sourced, obsessively tested. And it's our responsibility to be on top of just all new advancements in the natural side mm. and do a really fucking good job of it. Mm. And then B products have so many different benefits and then they're also highly enzymatic. So they work as amazing carriers because they have all the enzymes and you can, you know, absorb things very well with B products. So it's cool because we have this product class that's just like really conducive to making stuff that works. And CBD I've been using as a consumer for a while and just, you know, reading about it and keeping on top of medical trends, I was like, okay, there's some really amazing benefits here and anxiety and stress and sleep are such issues today. So, and a lot of people also use raw honey to sleep. So just raw honey on its own, by the way, is an amazing way to hack your sleep because raw honey is full of amino acids. And one of them is tryptophan. So that same situation you get from Turkey. And when you have raw honey, it causes a slow, steady spike in insulin, which allows the tryptophan to cross the blood brain barrier where it's converted into serotonin and then melatonin. So to start, honey is like a good, like a teaspoon of honey before bed is great for sleep. And then when I was reading about CBD and I'm a bad sleeper, I started just making this for myself and it was working. And I was like, okay, that's honestly, it's so funny. All of our products that are my favorite products, it's like shit I was making for myself Mm. or, or, Elixir, that one, my co-founder, who you guys know, he had a really, he played hockey in college, like a good Canadian boy. And Mm -hmm. he's had a lot of concussions. Mm. And three years ago, he had a really serious concussion. He was on a ski trip and he knocked himself unconscious. And I got a call from his brother and I just like freaked out and went down the research rabbit hole. And I put Mm -hmm. together this crazy concussion protocol with all of these different natural ingredients and that turned out to be Belixir. So a lot wow. of our products came to be because they solved one of our personal problems, like Propolis with my immune system, Belixir helping him to rehabilitate his brain from his concussion. And then after that, it helped a really close friend of mine who was getting off of Adderall. Mm. And helped her what? Her, him. Just tran- her transition off. She was like aggressively using Adderall like a lot of people do today. And Still she- at Goldman. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, and she needed something that was going to act as a stimulant, but but not deplete her neurons and something that was going to be really nourishing to the brain, but give her a little bit of an edge and Belixir really worked for her. So really? that was cool. Um, and then the CBD honey, because I just don't sleep and I get really stressed because I run the mm-hmm. business. Um, CBD was amazing and I was putting it in honey and, you know, making it for myself that way. And then once I started thinking it should be a product, we're like, okay, how can we make this better? Because we're not the first people to do CBD honey before but we've done it in a different way that I'm really stoked about. So what we did is we created a CBD MCT oil emulsion and then we infused it into the honey molecules. So every single spoon you take from our jar is a fixed 28 milligram. So you can medically dose versus other CBD. It's just mixed into the honey. So like you'll take a spoon from the jar and you'll get five milligrams of CBD and then the next spoon will be 15 and you know, you can't really dose with it. So yeah, so it's cool for that. Oh, you said you don't How did sleep. you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> Truly. We have a really amazing chemist on our team. That's who I work really close with. He is hot. <laughs> it's kind of a hot, hot <laughs> patient, <laughs> don't you think? Chemist? Yeah. What are you doing in there? White lab coat? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what keeps you up at night? Trying to, like knowing that I don't have balance and trying to find it is a big one. Mm. It's really... It's really hard to manage that, especially at this stage and especially because I'm so excited about my company and my team and so invested in that. It's really hard to make time for other people. Like dating is so hard as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And then also just like questioning myself and making sure that I'm in front of everything because really my biggest job is troubleshooting and putting out fires and making sure that like everybody is in the best position to do the best work in their job. Mm. So one, like questioning myself and wondering if I missed anything or if I did a good job on this. And that's like, you know, normal anxiety stuff that I'm trying to. Yeah. Would the I don't date- know if that ever goes away. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> With the dating stuff, do you like, you're so successful and smart and grounded. Like, do you feel like you are intimidating? Thank you. I don't think I'm intimidating because... I'm not super I don't mean that vocal. in a bad way, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not, when I meet guys, I'm not like super, I, I try to also just not talk about just work. Just like be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm just like well, hey. Like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like, 
Beans. What's your favorite tea? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. <laughs> also um, in LA. I don't know. I'm just like curious about your experience <laughs> because there are so many badass women like Mm -hmm. doing amazing things and like one the balance is hard just to make time for dating but then once you do date it's like dealing with these egos who are like intimidated or hurt by yeah their babies your your (laughs) intelligence and your drive and your focus like oh you don't need me 25 out 24 hours a day like you know what I mean yeah mm-hmm. it's like a different thing for men I think so this is really interesting because I never thought that was happening because I just like have more faith in humanity I think it's for mm-hmm. me when I see somebody who's doing something good and passionate about it I am I love that like I love them I want to know them I want to be around them me too but I'm not I like haven't had the best go with boys recently and I was talking to my co-founder about this and he's like yeah because it's intense like it's intense being around you because you've got a lot of shit going on and I was like yeah but like isn't that good? I'm independent. I'm, you know, I I don't need anything. And if we vibe, we can just like hang out and base a relationship off that. But I guess it is, I guess it is hard for guys and like guys are having a masculinity crisis right now. So that's playing into everything. But um, I think, yeah, like that's probably what's happening. I think it, it's a lot for them to navigate and it probably is intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's intimidating too, to be with someone that has their dream job. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like very like, it's very rarely do people have their dream job. And and so if they see that, it's scary. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm not doing what I love. I'm still here. So that's like very intimidating. I can imagine. I've noticed LA guys get mad when you don't prioritize them also. Like I'm busy. Mm. And sometimes I have to like cancel last minute and I try not to because I try not to be an asshole generally. But (laughs) Sometimes that happens and they get like really butthurt about it. What like, do they do? Really, really upset. Like just like little babies. Blast you on Twitter. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. <laughs> Interesting. Just like if you're not prioritizing this, then it's like, dude, we've gone on two days. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like let's be friends first. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, what's hard about what you do? Like being an entrepreneur. Um, it's very, it can be very isolating. Yeah. Just because you are, mm-hmm. like I said, like you're you're considering everyone else's problems first and you're building something new. Like you're building something that doesn't exist and you work really, really long hours and that's just what it takes. So that can be really hard, but I really try to spend like, you know, work in time with my friends and I'm really lucky that I have great friends and a great team. And yeah, and then just not, it's what I was saying before as well, just not questioning yourself. It's because you're in a situation where, as the CEO, nobody's giving you feedback. Nobody's like, hey, that was a good job there or, or you know, mm-hmm. even bad job. And you're constantly doing new things. You're always wondering like, okay, was that like the best I could do? Did I get that really right? Yeah, so that's hard. And, and I mean, that's just cultivating a stronger sense of self and building your confidence and doing all that stuff, which I mean, I think everyone should do, but those things tend to be more pronounced in a situation where you have to evaluate yourself all the time. Mm. What would you say to our listeners um, who like you have like a vision and a passion, but don't necessarily, sounds weird, but you didn't know a lot about the process of beekeeping. So you went and you learned everything you didn't know about um, uh, co-packing and Mm -hmm. all those things. So for people who have a passion or have a product that they think works, but they need to do a lot more work in order to connect all the dots, what would you say to them? So I literally had, I could not have known less about a subject than bees. Like I I truly knew nothing about it. No idea how to start a business. And I'm not a super smart, like I'm a normal person. So everybody deserves to go after what they want. And nobody is not capable of that. And it really comes down to putting in the work. Like it's not about who's the smartest or has this weird innate skill set. It's what are you willing to do to make it happen? And... I'm willing to do anything and everything because I care about this and I know that it needs to exist. So if you want to bring something to life, sit down and think about what it means to you to do that and how badly you want it and basically what you're willing to do and what you're willing to sacrifice because there's always sacrifices. Um, And if, if you're still feeling super driven, then fucking do it. Like, and just don't question yourself. Like I, or you know what, question yourself. It's impossible not to. I question myself every second of every day, but I never let that stop me ever. It doesn't matter how insecure I feel or scared I feel. 
actually, the more scared I feel, the more I go for it as a rule. Wow. So questioning yourself is a part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. And and the practice of moving past it, like that's also, that makes us all better people because mm-hmm. again, like we're never going to stop questioning ourselves. What we have to really cultivate and get good at is learning to ignore the bullshit stories we tell ourselves that hold us back. Mm. For you, what were those stories? I'm not smart enough to start a company. I've never started a company before. This is crazy. It's not going to work. I can't tell you how many people, like successful people in finance who told me very specifically why this was going to fail. Like I actually, when I was leaving, I had somebody sit me down and using like arbitrary numbers, go through margins and tell me like, this is where you'll be in five years at your little company. Here's where you'll be at Goldman Sachs. And I was just like, I'm still going to fucking do it. So bye-bye. dude? Yep. Um, (laughs) It's just so interesting. Like the whole, how people are so driven by numbers and an Excel sheet. Like it's almost putting a cap on what you could do. And like what they don't know is like, because this industry has barely been paved, the there's no ceiling, mm-hmm. you know? I, so don't 100%. even give me an Excel sheet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it was ridiculous. And the whole thing is like, the fact that it's so weird and no one's done it before and there's no benchmark, that's my opportunity. I'm doing something so. different. I'm not making a better than version. I'm making something new, which is what I'm excited about. And the other thing too, and this is like what you were saying about dating, that person is somebody who's really smart, but obviously isn't super happy with where they've landed because they were chasing something that I don't want to chase. And me making that move early in my career highlights everything that they decided against. And like, that sucks. And that's scary Mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. But I mean, like being 50 and putting a 26 year old on blast for her dreams is kind of rude. So that is... (laughs) Would he say that to his kids? Well, probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Probably. They think that, I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm blown away. But it was literally the best thing that could have happened to me because on it, like hearing all that bad stuff, that's why I say like sit down with yourself and think about what you really want to do because all of the fears, like all of my fears were just laid out on the table for me and I was like, still need to do this. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And I I can go back to that anytime things are hard. Like this is, a choice I've made that I'm so committed to because I just believe in what I'm doing. Yeah, those fears are like benchmarks. You can go back and be like, oh, I got through that. Mm. I was scared shitless, but I got through that. So then the, the one you're in now is kind of like, okay. 100%. And get through this. I don't know if this happens for you guys. It's really interesting with benchmarks because you always think like these money, like revenue benchmarks or this or that, but the benchmark, the only benchmarks that you internalize are the fear ones, right? like Mm -hmm. getting over something or team ones, like Mm -hmm. seeing someone else do something that Mm -hmm. they didn't think they could do. Mm -hmm. And so that's like what drives humans forward, I think. And I think if you can recalibrate and start to prioritize those things, you'll just live a much fuller life. I agree. Beautiful. (laughs) That was really good. So good, girl. You're so smart. Yeah, it's okay, last, real steamy. Last, last, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Literally our body shut off. Yeah. Um, Last question and then plug where people can find you. Um, Like, how do you hope that beekeepers will change the world, the brand? I hope that will help people feel better. Will help people get away from, you know, synthetic medicines and will help people heal from concussions and get off just the things they're taking that are not working for them and help them live a healthier life. Love that. And also help save the bees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where save can people, the bees. We, where can people find you and the brand? So our website is beekeepersnaturals.com. You can check us out on Instagram. It's beekeepers underscore naturals. And yeah, that's where we are. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for babe. coming. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks for coming. You're the best. I love that we <laughs> talked about this Justin's going to be mad today. we didn't talk about Paul Stamets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? He's like, ask her about Paul Stamets. That's all I want you guys to do. What is an ex? Justin, how much he knows about bird scooters. Like, I can't tell you how much Seb and I have talked about that, by the way. Oh, his bird. He gets on the, he's very. He really knows a lot. He it. gets on these things and he just knows a lot. Like right now he's really into like, I don't know, deep space stuff. So it's like all about that and like. I don't know. So, yeah. Wait, can I tell you my Instagram idea for Sev? I think he should have an Instagram called bird watching and it should just be like taking photos of different people on birds. Oh my God. Yeah. I love that. 
I was going to say, he should quit birds. his job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trip, Justin, not a bird. Um, or it could we be just a, Justin. Yes. That might be better, we actually. A together the other day. It was really wow. hilarious. It was, it was a lot of weight on one little scooter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Thank for you, being honey. Here, Carly, thanks, you're the best. Bye, guys. I kind of want to do an almost 30 field trip mm-hmm. to like a. Love that. Her BM. Oh, I love that. That's great. Her aviary. Is that what it's called? Yeah. B aviary. Yeah. I'm like half serious, half not, but I think almost 30 field trips would be fun. Oh, I completely agree. I think that'd be so fun. Right. Maybe you could find a lover. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Because I'm single as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we all could find lovers at the B aviary. <laughs> aviary. Right? aviary. What is a bunch of beehives? Let's Google it. Hey, our producer, <clears throat> can you Google Excuse it? Me. <clears throat> yeah. hey, producer over there. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is a bunch of bees? It's an aviary. No, you're right. Cool. We learned this. A- apiary. Oh, oh shit. fuck me. <laughs> Isn't that like Beyonce is the apiary? Do they have an apiary? Like a beehive? Yeah. Or is it just the beehive? I guess there's just one. She's the queen. There's just one. There's mm. no other hives. I wonder how many brains have just exploded. Yeah, honestly. This. <laughs> there's no other hives with Beyonce. Okay. Let's read a review. Yeah. Um, so our latest review is from H. Ross 3. Five right. stars. Best lifestyle podcast. I've finally found a podcast that I'm hooked on. I've made several lifestyle adjustments, some that I didn't even know I've needed. I feel healthier, mind, body, and soul. I've laughed. I've cried. I'm so happy to have found a new sisterhood. You can also join their secret Facebook group to get more access to like-minded souls. Thank you, Krista and Lindsay. Keep them coming. Love you, honey. Thank you. See y'all. Thank you so much. And thanks for writing your reviews. They mean so much to us. It really helps us. It's just a nice little thing you can do. Uh, We'll see you on tour. Almost30podcast.com slash tour. Follow us on Instagram at almost30podcast. We're pretty ratchet. There's not a lot of pictures of Lindsay and I, so don't you worry. (laughs) And buy your um, I Am Enough necklace, which is available on our website. We have five or six more left. So those are limited edition gold bar necklaces that say I am enough, which we believe you are enough. You are. Hey guys, we love you. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you on Thursday. Ta-ta. 